this is London's Piccadilly Circus. But you won't find any lion tamers or trapeze artists here. It's not literally a circus. Circus is just from the same root as circle, which means a round open space, at a junction in this case, the junction between Regent Street, Glasshouse Street, Shaftesbury Avenue, Coventry Street and Piccadilly. Um, the name Piccadilly comes from Piccadilly Hall, which used to stand here. Uh, the story goes that it belonged to a tailor who made these big fancy lace collars called Piccadils. And the circus is most famous for Piccadilly Lights, which I guess is our equivalent of Times Square. The first illuminated advert in Piccadilly Circus was in 1908, so over a hundred years ago, and it was for Perrier. Originally, the illuminations were just light bulbs, and then they became neon signs, and then digital projectors, and finally LED screens. And originally the lights were all the way around the junction, but now it's just on this one building. And it used to be a big patchwork of screens, but in 2017 they were replaced with a single massive screen. The main advertisers you see a lot of are Coca-Cola, uh, Samsung, Hyundai, L'Oreal, eBay, Stella McCartney and Hunter. In fact, Coca-Cola has advertised at Piccadilly Circus since 1954. And the lights are a popular tourist destination in their own right. And people do come to the circus to see the Book of Mormon and the Body World exhibition. But while they're here, they get their picture taken with the lights. But what people often don't know about the Piccadilly lights is that while you're watching them, they're watching you back. They have two cameras. The cameras look out at the crowd and they're not there for security. They're there for targeting the advertising that's on the board. The cameras are hooked up to software that can tell how many people are looking at the sign. They can have a good guess at your age and your gender. They're hooked up to local weather information so they know if it's sunny or if it's raining, if it's summer or winter. They can tell if you're wearing glasses they can tell if you have a beard. They can guess your mood based on your facial expressions. It can recognise the kinds of vehicles that pass by. And most importantly, they keep track of how long you look at the screen. So they can work out whether, for example, people watch more bikini adverts in summer or in winter. They can work out if children look at bright colours for longer. They can work out if lots of blue cars happen to be around in the mornings, how much the rain affects people looking up at the screen, and they can tell what sort of people are in the crowd at any given moment and change the advertising accordingly to catch more eyeballs for longer. This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is on the official company website for the company that runs the Piccadilly Lights. They're called Lansec and they sell themselves to their advertisers this way. Who else can tell you how long people actually look at your advert broken down by demographic? This is all freely available information on their website. Now, to be fair to Lansec, they say they don't keep any of the images. They just keep the camera's decision about what your age and your gender and your mood are. They don't link the images to individuals, they can't tell your name, and if you leave and come back, the camera has no way of telling that you're the same person. If the police ask them to find a specific person, they won't be able to do that. So the police will just have to look at all the other CCTV footage in Piccadilly Circus. But still, a huge amount of data is being collected on people without their consent or without their knowledge. No one tells you when you walk near the cameras, oh, just to let you know, there are cameras here looking at your face. Right now, the technology is rare, but that won't be the case forever. This would be easy to roll out on the tube or at bus stops. I don't want Coca-Cola or Samsung to have any more power than they already do to make me buy their stuff. <laughs>